This is cool. This is the real, this is a real room. This is not a Zoom background, but you know what's funny <laughs> is I, I took a photo, I took a photo of this and whenever I'm in LA, I just, I, that, I make it my Zoom background, but this right now we're, <laughs> this is the live. Like, this is the real back. You know, <laughs> it would be funny if you were the there room. anyway and you still used the yeah, background. It's just to seem more Hollywood. <laughs> it's how I operate. I feel like my glasses are steaming up right now. I don't think you can see that. But not at all. No. Steaming. No. Oh, really? Well, oh, oh, when you took it off, I saw. Yeah, you took it off. Know, like that. Yeah, it's like, all right. That always happens to me when I'm wearing a mask. Oh man. You know what's funny too is uh, this. This is a horse. Like here, right there. That's a horse that we used to have at the farm, and his name was Silver. And there was a doctor that would drive by. And at that time, the, we had two corrals, and the corral was closer to the like the the road, the public road. And we, well, so I think like I'm not exactly sure what the timing was. I don't know if it was like you know, in summer he goes at this corral, winter he goes to this corral, or whatever it is. But he was at the one that's a little bit visible from the road. And this doctor used to go by, and the doctor would stop and feed the horse. And he actually is the one that took that photo. Or the, oh, really? So that's what that horse. Yeah, it's kind of it was kind of neat, you know. Like people are they're just attracted to the yeah. horses, you know. I guess like they, they like to stop, and that's something that we found out. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know, what's funny? It's also the do- that's also the doctor that put him down. <laughs> yeah, when I say doctor, it's a veterinarian, and we actually paid him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. and, he, and then he took the picture, which was kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He took it before and after. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. It was a little creepy. I remember like my mother-in-law, she would be like, she was like, this doctor keeps stopping by and pet. she's like, I just think he's just, he just likes horses. Because yeah. at first we were like, why, why is I that love guy? You know, pet like, a horse. I love petting horses. They're so like soft and gentle. <clears throat> I went horseback riding recently. You did? Yeah. How, it was dude, I've, only, I've only gone horseback riding once. Do you remember your horse's name? Oh man. It wasn't even that long ago. I bet you, I bet you Jen remembers. And as soon as I hear it, I'm going to go, oh yeah. I remember yeah. he was, they made me feel like, like, like I'm fat or something. Like they're like, what does everybody weigh? And then everybody got like a normal small horse, <laughs> like a regular size horse. And then I'm yeah. like, I'm 190. And they're like, oh, you need this big guy. <laughs> Bring out for Clydesdale. Yeah, dude. He was giant, but he was like, he was like, uh, yeah, like the oldest one. Though. Was his was name Budweiser? <laughs> no. What was his name? Bring, I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, Buddy. We'll just call him Buddy in front of anyone that weighs over one ninety. Okay. But she was like, he's the leader of the pack, and and uh, he, he 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 like knew where he was going. Like for a while, like our 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 leader like kind of left, and she was like, "You're fine," because he knows where he's going. It was it was pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. That was in Paso Robles, actually. Oh wow. I did the, uh, the the only time I ever rode a horse that I remember, except for like photos and stuff when I was a kid. Um, yeah, did I ever tell you that? Well, well, we'll get to the, I was in Tijuana I, or near Tijuana. I, it was when I lived in San Diego, I got to ride a horse uh, at midnight. They were like, hey, they do midnight runs and you can ride a horse at midnight on these trails, the full moonlight. And yeah, it was really exciting. And I remember our, um, looking back, I'm like, I would never do that now. But like at the time I didn't know any better. I was just like, it's safe, you know? And it's safe to be, you know, on a horse and you've never ridden one at midnight near the Mexican border. Yeah. And I remember like, like, you know what I mean? Cause now I'm looking back, I'm like, you know, our guide was drinking like a alcohol of a, what do they call it? Like a flask. A flask. Yeah. It was, I was like, but at the time I was like, this is like the old West, you know, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, uh, and he goes, you know, you're going to, I don't know what the, what word he said, but basically it was, you're going to see illegals crossing the border here. And he goes, but don't be afraid. Don't be, you know, don't be alarmed. He goes, their goal is to get from here to the city, San Diego. They have no, I, they have no concern with, with horseback riders. So I don't know if it was all BS, but I was like, yeah, oh, good to me. You know, Until like, they punch you and then take your horse to, to go across. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're like, si se puede. <laughs> I've heard like, the expression yeah, like, uh, wet back. I've never heard horseback. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think that was like a, yeah. I know. I think that was a government term, right? Like uh, operation. Uh, if you Google it, I remember looking it up. What once wetback? And, yeah, just like uh, yep, like with uh, oh. I was from, you know, maybe I went to a weird school, but back in the, you know, I, I 
I looked it up. I can't look it up now because I'm using my phone, but it's just, it's like, um, I think the Cubans have a thing called, is it dry foot? I was going to say, I thought you would call a Cuban that because they swam here. I think that uh, yeah. we're getting into weird territory where I'm uncomfortable, Augustine. Well, you know what? I haven't officially started the podcast yet, so that's fine. <laughs> no, at least not. it's funny. This is, I mean, well, do what you want, but, you know, yeah. maybe bleep a couple of words. But, uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, I haven't, I haven't hit record on the audio yet, so we only have, we only have video oh, that, right now. Oh, okay. Um, I see the word record. Oh, cool. How long do you I, uh, normally do? I spun all that gold for nothing? Damn it. <laughs> how long do you normally well, do? Uh, let's keep it tight because I don't yeah. know how long this battery is going to last. Because oh, I'm not okay. Well, then I'm, let's go. 90, yeah, I'm trying to squeeze 90, a workout yeah. in before I have to have dinner with my wife. So let's. Yeah, what do you okay, say? Like cool. half hour. Oh uh, man, I wish you were recording. You weren't recording. Yeah, you were recording, weren't you? I, I am recording it on is. Zoom. It's just that it, yeah. the, the audio is not going to be as good as when I actually hit record. So like it would it would oh. sound different. Like, like most of the cast would be great audio and then one part would be, you know what I usually do though, when we do have like a little fun in the beginning, I usually like take it and put it at the end as like bonus footage. Oh, the love, use the levelator and you'll be fine. But anyways, let's start it. Let's start it. Cause I don't know how long this phone is. Let's try to go for 30 to 40 minutes maybe. And then cool. if, after that, we just know that the phone may die, but I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Um, I'm going okay. to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say, so this is basically your podcast. I'll send it to you. Yeah. And uh, uh, no, how about, I'll, how about we just, um, we just okay. it. Yeah. 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 Or do you want to do the intros later? That way we can just do the interview and then. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Just cause I don't know how long this phone, you know what I mean? Actually. Um, or whatever you want to do. I, I kind of got to do the video, the intro really quick, but I, it's not sponsors or, any, or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's just a, the the intro really quick, because that's really hard okay. to edit. So let me just do it, okay? Yes. yes. And and then and, and then you can add your intro when I send it to you if you want. Yes. Okay. Cool. And three, two, one. Please take your seats. School is now in session. Welcome to Homeschool Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. It's time to document the journey. Welcome back to Homeschool Podcast. I'm Augustino Zoida, and uh, this is also the Pocket Party Podcast because uh, we're, 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 we're two men handling it. That sounded funny. Uh, <laughs> that's what they used to say in wrestling. Two men handling. There was a lot of uh, erotic terms in, <laughs> in, in wrestling. Uh, <laughs> I'm here with Darren Carter, everybody. Welcome back to the show, and it's great to be back on his. Uh, how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Is, is that the intro? Can I start talking now? I don't know how this works. Yeah, you, go ahead. I'll add in sponsors and stuff at the end. <laughs> oh, look at this Richie Rich guy over here. I'll add all my. I've got Pepsi at seven o'clock. Yeah. I've got, I'll, I'll drop them in. <laughs> I gotta. I got. I gotta plug my T-shirts and my tour dates. And, <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, I'm in the top five percent of podcasts. <laughs> That's right. Dude, that sounds great. Dude, it sounds, it sounds uh, good. I don't know. If I hope that website is, uh, you know, legit. Uh, like I said there was, a, yeah, legit, right? Like I don't know. Yeah. What, I, I guess you know what it is when I when I'm back in LA, I'll have more time because I'll be on, you know, better Wi-Fi. Can do. listen. It's really hard. Yeah. There's certain work that I like doing on the farm, like, and then I like to get out there, ride my bike. See, I mean, how often can you basically be enjoying the great outdoors? So when it comes down to like hours and hours of like book work if you will, clerical yeah. type stuff. I'm like, let me save that for LA when I have good Wi-Fi and I can like, you know, right. Cause I'm going to so take work. some of those metrics and, and see what we can do with it. You know, like, like I was, for you guys, if you're listening, um, there was a website, someone had told me and they were all excited. They were like, do you know, your, your podcast is in the top 1% out of 2 million, 700 and whatever it was. Yeah. And, and so I started kind of snooping around like, Oh, I wonder how this podcast is. And like Joe Rogan would be like 0. 0.001. Yeah. And a lot of podcasts are in the 0. 0.05, like yeah. the ones that you and I know, but I was happy just to be in the top. I think I was top 1%. Yeah. I looked you up. You were at the top 3%. I don't know. No, mine, were, was, were, mine was five. And what's funny is that you text me. You're, oh. you're, you're like, Hey, I looked up yours. Yours is five. And I'm like, what's yours? And you're like one. And I didn't, I didn't fully understand how it worked. And I was like, yeah, I beat you. <laughs> You're like, no, one is better. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking 
school when you're in the top like 100% means an A. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like 5% of all the listeners in the world listen to me, and you only have 1% of them. <laughs> That's how I looked at it. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, the higher you get, the better it is. <laughs> yeah. But this guy was telling me, he's like, he's like, yeah, you take those metrics and take that information, and then you reach out to sponsors and you show them that you lay it out. Here's, you know, but. I just haven't had a chance to do that. In fact, I was going to pay a guy to do that. I said, please do it for me. I'll just give you some money. Like, let's just, you know. Yeah. And uh, he, he was like, I don't know if I can do it because of the, you know, whatever. He had like some, this, whatever. Like, he's like, a third party can't, whatever. Uh, but I think there are agents that would do that for us. Absolutely. But in the meantime, I'm just loving, you know, doing podcasting, doing YouTube, you know, talking about life, talking about things. Um you know, before the show started, we were talking about that horse behind yeah. me, yeah. and uh, we were talking about horseback. I didn't know you weren't recording. I was like, oh, I just spun some gold. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's all right. I'll add it in at the end for bonus footage. Please do, because we they, technically um, were recording. <laughs> I just didn't have the I just didn't have the Zoom recording, the audio. I mean, my Zoom recorder. I got a I got a question for you. Uh, yes. But you know, usually I I save this for my my podcast like at the end, but I'm gonna start out and I'm just gonna say what I bought. I, I want to ask you if there's anything that you've recently bought that that has uh, made you just a little bit happier. And and I'll go first. I'll go first. Man. Okay. You know, you're like this bag of drugs. No. <laughs> no, they, uh, I uh, I recently bought and look at this. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up. I'll show you this. Look at this. This sounds so silly, but I've never purchased a neck gaiter before. You know those. <laughs> neck gaiters? Yeah. Yeah. I like how I hold it up, like for, the, for our listening audience who's never seen a, a neck gator. But you throw the neck gator on, and I'm like, "This is great!" Yeah, yeah. I got an American flag just, one. You know, me, me, me being a ginger, it's like I mean, I'm constantly <laughs> trying to like pop my collar up, look like an '80s dad. Like, hey, man, my, <laughs> I didn't come from the tennis court. I just don't want a red neck. <laughs> <laughs> that black thing, one you're wearing, you got there. That that exact one. I just saw a video of Elon Musk wearing it. Really? Yeah. This is cool. Oh, well, that's really badass. But yeah, great so I, minds. I like, yeah, right. And by the way, my son's name is Austin, and I believe Elon lives in Austin because he mm -hmm. tweeted the other day some electric guitar emojis, two electric guitar emojis, and then he wrote Austin rocks. <laughs> and your son is super into music. Yeah, exactly. And then so so uh, by the way, he's he's got his own YouTube channel, thirteen years old. Os the bass boss. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. I know. Dude, you know what's sad is uh well not sad, but um well what I was gonna say is he's actually growing faster than I am right now. And I and I and I don't want to put you in a weird position, but he may have more subs than you on YouTube. But I don't know. What how many subscribers do you have on YouTube? I don't even know, dude. I have no idea. I don't well, look at it too probably much. Know. My son, that's his that's his hobby. Uh -huh. He loves to how many subs people have he's Just like to go look. dad yeah he'll yeah anybody even like it's kind of a, it's sometimes i gotta be honest it's a little annoying because there'll be like some musician that i really like and he'll yeah. go ha ha he only has two hundred thousand subs and i'm like dude like, like <laughs> he didn't, elvis presley did not upload this okay it was a fan <laughs> of elvis, all right but, i would i would i would i would pray for two hundred thousand subs <laughs> exactly exactly I think at this at this recording, Austin, I think he has like 303. Yeah. 303 subs. But I'm like, I just remember him climbing and getting 100 subscribers. That was a big deal in our house. Like 100 well, subscribers and kidding me. And, you know, I've you only know. been, I haven't been on YouTube that long. I, I pushed for my podcast audio only for a really long time. And I didn't yeah. really want to open a can of worms of video that I didn't understand. I barely knew how to edit audio. And as I learned more, I, I adapted more. So like my YouTube is really off the ground slowly. Uh, it does okay. Like when I have a really big guest on, like it'll it'll really shoot up some like, more. Um, that's embarrassing. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look at this a month from now and be like, I guess I didn't wasn't a big guest. <laughs> you know, um, but the the audio number still is the is the where I get the most. Um, but I'm still trying to build yeah. the YouTube. But you know, kids just understand that stuff so much better, like the YouTube algorithm. And if I had the time oh, to I, learn it, yeah. I mean, yeah. no offense, Austin, but but you don't have two day jobs and to pay rent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. They they every, every bit of free time when he's not like doing homework or schoolwork or playing his instruments, he's like 
he's you know the kids are like a sponge they he's absorbing information uh -huh. he's like like today he helped me he's like dad can i do the thumbnails for your newest videos and he's like watching and he's taking screenshots and he's getting ideas and, and today he was practicing it's funny you know like when you want to learn something like a musician you will or, or anything remember break dancing i don't know if you yeah. were you might yeah. be a little, but, no i remember break dancing guessing, i remember kids that were really, they were really good at break dancing yeah and i go i don't know if that looks good or not i'd be like how do you do it and they go wow they'd watch, they'd rent the movie you know, like like a, like breaking two or whatever and they would just kept rewinding and watching and practicing and seeing yeah. what they did and same thing with musicians they slow it down and you can you know so austin today just for fun he was practicing um mimicking some of the youtube thumbnails of of, of artists that he like admires and respects he's like yeah. i want to see if i can do that so he was practicing and but you're you're right when when you got like you know real adult responsibilities <laughs> it's hard I'm going to practice making YouTube thumbnails. Yeah. You know what I mean, we're not really, we're not really doing that. You know? But I should, I mean, we should be doing it. I mean, you should be letting Austin handle your YouTube actually. Uh, yeah. He should be opening or closing every single one of your podcasts with a song or something <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like a father son yeah. like, duo. You know what we've been doing? We've been doing more vlogs like, uh, well, we've always done that, but like this weekend we just, we shot a couple of vlogs. I'm going to put those up on YouTube. Uh, it's super fun, man. Like, Anybody that, that wants to do this kind of thing, and if you can involve someone you love, like, it's great. Like, you know, because we're here at the farm, we have all these different tires and tractor tires and stuff. So this weekend, I lined up nine tires, in a, like nine tires, three in a row to make a tic-tac-toe grid. <laughs> That's and cool. We went down to Hobby Lobby, and I bought, like, some bandanas, some orange bandanas, some green bandanas, and we made a video of us playing tic-tac-toe. And what you do is it's like a foot race. So you start about 30 yards away and you go on your mark, get set, go. And you run as fast as you can and you throw a bandana in one of the circles. You go back, pick up another one, and you throw it down and the first person to get three in a row. Wins. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. You got to keep so creative, of man. <laughs> he was great because he got like three in a row. Like he went the first game. He, I'll just tell you right now. He won the first game. He went, <laughs> he went like bing, bing, bing right in a row. And so the second, because we said, you know, winner out of three. The second game, I saw what he was doing. He was going to go one, two, three. So he went one, and then I blocked him with mine. And he was like, oh, and it made him slow down. You can but run still... at the same time as him and block him, right? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not block him physically, but block no, him. No, I know, like... I know, yeah, yeah. Block his yeah. bandana. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, ah, you throw it, throw it down first. And, yeah, it was funny because that – I was using more strategy, but I still actually that one was a draw because even though I stumped him right there, he ended up yeah. putting it somewhere else. And I was like, ah, you know, but but that's the kind of thing, you know, like I like doing like those vlogs. And I, I mean, I can see you doing some vlogs, <laughs> you know, like, uh, you in the morning with, the, with the morning walks with, the, with your dog. Yeah, I was doing that for a little while. Um, I, I got a, I actually got a lot of other stuff that I, I'm doing. I'm, uh, but anyway, I was going to tell you, I think that's great that you do that stuff with your son. I think you don't. Even I mean I know you're really enjoying the father son quality time, but I don't know if you realize like how much that's going to like be a memory. Like certain you'd be surprised the memories that stay with kids. Like sometimes I tell my dad stuff that I remember, and he'll be like, I'm, I, he's he's like I don't get the things that stuck with you. Like certain things stuck oh. and certain things didn't. And I, you know you do so much creative and fun stuff with, with. And I know you were adopted and you you didn't re meet your dad till later. I mean you had good foster parents, right? So, yeah, I, but yeah, I mean, like, it's yeah. so cool that, you know, you seem like a really good dad, dude. I just think that's, I think that's great. Like my dad wasn't, um, into like sports. Like we didn't go to games and I didn't really learn how to play any sports or anything like that until I was maybe a teenager. And that's why all my, my teams that I like are Boston teams because I didn't get into sports until I moved there. Um, but my dad was always super into like mixed martial arts and uh i was always into like movies and comedy and stuff like that so yeah. so we didn't oh i didn't want to watch like his little boxing <laughs> you... matches i wanted to watch like yeah. a, like bill cosby stand-up special or you know like a jim carrey movie or something and and uh but we both did love movies that the thing that sticks out with me the most is uh watching movies with my dad like that's the th those are some of my best memories and i this last weekend, actually, I watched a movie with my dad, and we haven't done that in a really long time. I can't remember the last time I saw a movie with my dad. So um, my wife was out of town, 
And so I told my parents, you know, why don't you come over for dinner? I'll cook dinner for you, and we'll watch uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Because, uh, oh. yeah, I, the, the reason I waited for my wife to be out of town is because I didn't think she wanted to watch that movie again. Like, we watched I've, – I've seen it so many times. Like, I've seen that yeah. movie, like, a thousand times. I, I just think it's a, a phenomenal movie, and I wanted my parents to watch it. So, anyway, my parents came over. I cooked dinner. We watched it. I just tweeted about it, actually, because I thought it was really funny. So, first of all, my dad comes over, and, you know, I was still cooking, and he sits on my couch, and he turns the TV on, and he was like – Oh, look at it. He's like, look, an Andre the Giant uh, documentary. And he starts watching that. And then, like, finally, I'm like, okay, dinner's ready. Let's start the movie. I start the movie. My dad watches the entire movie, loved it. But as soon as the movie ended, it's a three hour movie. As soon as the movie ended, my dad was like, let's see if we can find that Andre the Giant documentary. (laughs) Like, he just wanted to finish that. And then, and then, have, have you seen the movie? I, I haven't, but hold, hold on one thought. I, I think I have it right here, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Um, yeah, look, check it out, man. Look, here's what, uh, dude, I was, uh, you're going to, so I actually, I have I have not seen it, but I have it, though. Oh, you got the old screener? You got your Screen Actors Guild copy from two years yeah, ago? <laughs> I know, exactly. I, I, there's so many movies that they send you that I have zero interest in watching, but I'm like, this looks like it could be. You know what? By the way, I should open this. Yes, good. <laughs> that feeling if I open that, and it's, not it's in a there, great but... movie. I mean, don't watch it with your son because the end is really violent, and then there is some, like I'd say, sexual innuendo. Uh, but it's a phenomenal yeah. movie, and it kind of is telling the story of like when Manson family killed Sharon Tate. But it's like the days leading up to that. When um, you say when you say violence, like because uh, my um, my wife also doesn't like. Yeah, that don't kind watch of stuff. it with her then. It's actually okay, not so- violent for most of the movie until the very end. But, you know, it, dude, it's Quentin Tarantino. It's going to be violent. But don't watch yeah, it with exactly. her. But it's great. You have to see it. And, like, my dad's watching it the whole time. And every yeah. time he sees a hippie, he's just like, is, is, is that Charles Manson? And I'm like, no. <laughs> is, that, is that guy supposed to be Charles Manson? No. <laughs> like, every hippie that comes on screen. It was just a good time. Yeah, I probably, I, you know, I was kind of prepared. I thought, you know, if my wife isn't into this movie, I'm, I... I have my laptop in the back room, and I have uh, I have this, so I can I can pop the movie. Oh, nice! You know I mean? In your lap? Oh, a CD yeah. ROM? Yeah, yeah. Adapter? Like you, put the, you put this into the USB, and then you put the yeah, because you know the modern computers they don't the have MacBooks, it. Yeah, you got the disc drive anymore, so you got to. Is that also you know, an yeah. Apple product you got there? Yes. Nice. Look, look, see right there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's really the, cool. Um, yeah, so you ever want to yeah, watch a movie book. by yourself? That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, because my old my old computer just I would put the the discs in there and then and then you know as you you know as time goes by you get a newer computer and I'm like what are you supposed to do and they're right. like well you have this, this ninety nine dollar another thing you got to buy yeah. <laughs> what? Let me ask you a question. What kind of phone do you have and are you happy with? It? iPhone. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh. I mean, there's always things I can complain about. Okay, I mean, that'd be funny. I'm like, what is this iPhone you talk about? <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's things that are absolutely retarded in the phone yeah. that like Apple needs to correct. Like, why haven't you corrected this stuff? You keep working on stuff that people don't really need. Like, here's some more emojis. Isn't it cool? You can make an emoji that looks like you. But it's like, but you still haven't <laughs> fixed like fixed like all these typos. Like, when was the last time anyone said, "Where the duck are you?" Like, why? <laughs> like, I've never used the word duck ever texting someone like i've when do you ever need to say duck to someone like just put exactly. just take the duck out of there completely and let's add the f in because we all know that's what we're using <laughs> <laughs> hi i'm donald fluck yeah or or this one too like if you're if you're looking through your old text messages while that person's texting you it brings you right back down to the bottom and you lose your spot and it's like oh what? No. Yeah, fix that already because everyone at Apple is apparently single and you've never been in an argument with your spouse while you're looking for proof of something they said last month, which is basically what happens. Yeah, like some bookers like, what did I pay you last time? And you're like, well, it looks like – and then all of a sudden, come yeah. on, answer me. And then it goes back you. down. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. <laughs> but I mean I could never go Android. I, but I mean Apple does need to work on those little glitches. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking like. So I have to get a, um, I had to get a new phone. Supposedly it's going to come tomorrow, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, I didn't want to, it's just that the phone that I have now, I have, I have an Android, I have a galaxy 
and like the charging port wasn't quite working and sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. And I know I can do wireless charging, but I thought, man, what if I get into a jam and I'm like, I, you know, I'm flying to some airport and then I'm trying to get an Uber and there's, there's no phone and it's dead yeah. and I can't charge it. And then three weeks ago, my apps kept crashing. Like just, they, you would open up an email app and then just, phew, it would just crash. I'm like, what the, so there's been these problems. I knew that the end was coming, but I'm like, ah, you know, and, and so I was kind of debating if I should get, you know, if I should finally switch over to iPhone or should I just go, so I ended up going with what I know and I'm comfortable with Galaxy. So I'm going to oh, okay. stuck with Galaxy. And I found that I think at this point, these phones are both like so good. Like, you know, the, the, the iPhone 12 and the Galaxy, I think it's called the 21 Ultra. I think at this point, it's just preference. You know, it's not like one is way better than the other. I think, you know, I've been watching some YouTube videos and, and I think it's, whatever that person themselves feel comfortable yeah. with. You know what I mean? Well, like, there's certain things that I think Apple is far superior than the other phones. Like, mm. for example, if I send you a long text message, it's going to arrive yeah. in one text. If you have an mm. Android, it may get split up into different – because it's long, they'll actually send it in a couple different yeah. texts. And sometimes it won't arrive in the right order. Yeah. So oh, I, that's, I, that is true. That is true. So, yeah, that's, that's you know one thing. About- I was thinking the, the the thing that was pulling me a little bit toward iPhone was I love the fact that, um, you know, I can just, you can just airdrop something to somebody, you know, like it's amazing, you know? dude. Yeah. It's amazing. I, the, uh, I was thinking, what if I shoot all this footage throughout the day? I just come home, airdrop, you yes. know, and in no time on my lap, you know what I mean? Now I have to, yeah. you know, upload it to Dropbox. I use airdrop so much because I, I used I used several different programs to make my videos. Like uh, I use iMovie on my laptop, and then if I want to take a little clip from the podcast, I'll save it on my laptop and then airdrop it to my phone, where I use an app to add subtitles. And it's like yeah. the airdropping is so easy, really quick. I want to answer your question. The first one you asked me, what did I buy recently? But let me but let me let me finish this up and and. Uh, Something that's actually been on my mind because we're talking about it. I don't know if this is good radio, but it's just like it's just like two guys complaining about products. But I think as far as Apple goes, I'm I can't believe how horrible of a product the Gmail app that comes with the MacBooks is. You have a MacBook though, right? Yes, yes. And, and okay, so not not Gmail, but your mail folder. Oh, so that's like, funny you say that. I've I've never used it. I don't like that. I, I always prefer Gmail or I use yeah. Yahoo Mail. Or something. So the MacBook, I, the one that comes with the, I, I, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the MacBook comes with that little envelope, just like your cell phone yeah. iPhone has a little envelope for your email, and you just connect that to whatever you use. It says, "Do you use Gmail? Do you use Yahoo? Whatever." So it is a horrible product. Like it, it's so bad. It, half the time it doesn't work. Like the emails won't send. I get some kind of error or something that it's not connected to the right HTML or, or whatever the fuck. I don't even know. Yes. yes. You know, and, uh, and you know what else, dude? It's like it, when I'm on my laptop and I get an email, it just pops up. And I tried so many times to do like quit or like turn that feature off. Like I'll be doing a Zoom and I'll get an email and it'll go – Bing, really loud and the microphone picks it up and then the and then the app is like r- half the screen of like an email and i had to go and like r- it's horrible it's like a ho- I, i'm serious i i'm considering deleting it off the uh, laptop and just going you know just go to gmail.com now when it comes to um oh so what was the product that yeah i'm just oh okay we, we went from my simple world of <laughs> i got a net meter y'all it's like a turtle neck but just the turtle part yeah you know <laughs> what we're like you should yeah. be aware of neck gaiters, though. Uh, I love the neck gaiters because I find it easier to breathe when you have to yeah. have a mask on. But you should yeah, know yeah. on an airplane now, they won't let you use it. Ah, they okay. won't let you. I, I loved it. it they, they'll let you use it, but you have to have a second mask underneath. You'll have to oh. have two. So you have to have that and then your neck gaiter. But if you only have the neck probably gaiter, they go put, like, sorry. You have to put the mask probably over the neck gaiter. I, I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. I just maybe yeah. because if it's under, I'm going to be like, yeah, I am wearing it and just hang the things over my ears. <laughs> but really it's down, man. I got to go to Dubai yeah. and it's like 20 hour Whoa. flight. And, uh, what's that? You're going to go to Dubai. Yeah. I'm going to Dubai in May. 
Wow, congratulations. Thanks, I would man. man, I'm nervous to go there yet. <laughs> I, I would I would wait till everything is totally, you know, for me personally. Well, in Dubai know. it is pretty much open. Oh. Um they actually don't even require you to have a vaccine to go. They you only have to have a, a clean COVID test. And um to tell you the truth, I was slightly nervous too. And if I could be honest, I'm not nervous about catching COVID like at all. What I'm nervous about <laughs> is catching anything and you have symptoms of covid and like let's say i get a sore throat or a fever from a regular flu they're not going to let me come home you know what i mean like that's allergies yeah or allergies or something you know and if i take the test and they're like oh you 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 didn't pass and i'm like what i feel fine like what do you like i'm scared about stupid stuff like that and i'm not i'm gonna get stuck there and have to quarantine for two weeks but um i did make (laughs) an expensive country too right um, yes, but it's, the dollar is better here. So like, that's where people go. That's where the UK goes on vacation to go shopping mm-hmm. basically. So they'll get more for their money. Are, with this Dubai thing, are you going with some, like by yourself? Are you going to go with other comedians? I'm going by myself. Um, they wouldn't allow me to even bring a spouse. They wouldn't allow me to bring any comics. Um, I'm headlining May 13th and 14th. And then I have shows 19th, 20th, and 21st. So 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, four days, I have no shows. So I'm just Mm. there. But they pay for your flights. They pay for your hotel. Um, You're staying in five-star hotels. Even the nights that you don't have shows, they're paying for your hotel and food. And they pay for your transportation, everything. So it's like I'm making money. It's basically a free trip to Dubai. And, um, you know, it's good. And, and then they actually were like, hey, on your four days that you have off, you happen to be here the week of the Dubai Comedy Festival, which we, we'd like to invite you to do. So so I actually do have spots like every night of the week. Oh, cool. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm a little nervous. I've never been overseas before. And um, I mean, I, the farthest I've gone is like Canada, <laughs> you know, out of the country. And, Me too. I tell you, yeah, I, I've gone to Canada, which yeah. feels thing you feel like you're in europe but you're not yeah you know right it's a little scary i mean it's a muslim country not trying to say anything bad about muslims but i was just like i i almost didn't want to go like i i'm not the type of person to say no to opportunities you know what i mean so i i gave every i I tried really hard not to go like i was like i sent them a clip like i got recommended for the job but they wanted to see a current clip anyway and i sent them a clip of me being really dirty I was like, and cursing and stuff. Cause I wanted to make no mistakes that I get there. And they're like, Oh, it's illegal to talk about that type of stuff here. You know what I mean? But they're like, no, one of their shows is called the nasty show. Like they love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it's exciting. It's exciting. I'll be gone for like two weeks and it'll be a wonderful experience and I'll do the festival. So maybe I'll meet more international bookers. And that's something that I think you should definitely vlog, man. Like if you can just, Film stuff during the yeah. day, up the next day or, or that morning or the next or that night, and just kind of take us on a journey of like, you know, hey guys, it's Augustino on my first, you know, and, and just take us what that's through. A friend of mine did that. He was doing daily vlogs, and he went from 130 subscribers to over a thousand, and he did it within like a five month period. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, he um, yeah, so it was like he was just like uploading, 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 and he he had yeah. fun with it. So, so there's a, there is a, you know, there's definitely, if you do it consistently like that and plus, I mean, you're doing something exciting. Yeah. So I'll try everything, man. I've, I've tried to do, I've, I've started doing reels lately, which is actually really fun and you get a lot of views doing reels. So reels, you know, yeah. Um, and, and I think mostly it gets, it does well because people don't have a long attention span and the maximum reel is 30 seconds. So, By the way, did you say did you give an answer on what the thing is that you bought? There? No, no, no. I'm sorry. We keep getting we keep oh, we keep okay. getting sidetracked. I I bought something that is not here yet. It arrives tomorrow, and I'm super excited for it. I uh, <laughs> I I treated myself to a new backpack, which I will t- <laughs> I'll tell you that um I have had actually it's right here. Can I grab it? Two seconds. Yeah, sure. Two please, seconds, please. As you're as you're grabbing that, I'm gonna continue talking. Uh, you said new backpack. I thought you were gonna see a back scratcher. No, <laughs> I treated I, myself to an eight dollar. 
so because yeah, I have some backpacks over there. Like, I've had yeah. this bag. I've had this um this satchel, I guess, that I forever that I use when I travel and stuff. Or every day I use it when I go out and I bring. And I need to bring my laptop with me, so it's got my laptop, my notebook, and like my you know chargers and stuff. And 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 this used to be gray. I guess it kind of still is, but you see, like it's turning brown over here. And like, yeah. I I won this when I was 18 years old. I worked at the mall at the store I worked at. Guess it says it says guess on there. Like I I sold like the most like bags or something. So I got I won I won the bag. So I, I yeah. it's kind of cool that like I got it when I was 18 and I still have it and I'm a comic now and I use it for writing and everything. But at the same time I'm like how old are, how, how old are you now? Just to kind of I'm, paint a picture. I'm 33 now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm so about to be 33. Back. It's about about 15 years ago you've had that. Yeah. yeah, and like I'll go on the road and then and like <laughs> and Jimmy Schubert and I were getting on an airplane together once and he was like, he's like, bro, don't you think it's time for a new bag, bro? <laughs> you yeah. know, but I'm like, hey, man, it's got some, you know, kind of cool story behind it. And uh, I don't know, I, but I really needed one. And then also some of the shows I'm going to go do. Where's- Where's the new bag? Is the new bag here? Or so it'll be here tomorrow. And, uh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a Tommy Hill figure, which I think that you and I kind of talked about this the last time, how it's so hard for me to shop because I look for things that aren't made of animal. Uh, and, mm. and, and, oh, I, that's right. and I look for things that aren't made in China. Preferably, I want it to be made in the USA, just not China. Uh, anywhere where they have like sweatshops for children and stuff like that, I won't buy it. So it's actually been, it's always difficult for me to buy things. And, um, just a little note, Tommy Hill figure, um, their, their warehouse where they, their manufacturing warehouse is actually on an Island that is considered U S property. So, um, it's kind of like a loophole there, but (laughs) it was a little bit more expensive, but I was just like, I, you know, it's cool. It's, it's all black, but the handles red, white, and blue. I like that their colors are red, white, and blue. So, uh, uh, I used to do a joke about that. I used to do a joke about knockoff products. And one of my punchlines was, uh, like, that's not Tommy Hilfiger. That's Timmy Middlefinger. (laughs) (laughs) You got that, that Timmy Middlefinger. (laughs) Yeah. 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 When I wrote the joke, that was like a super popular like style. Yeah. uh, And then as far as suitcases, I either have a giant one or like my medium duffel bag for like, if I'm doing weekend stuff and it's like, a lot of my shows I have coming up are one-nighters, and I'm like, I really only need to bring my laptop, a change of clothes, underwear. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to have all this carry-on luggage. So I'm like, I'm going to invest in a nice little uh, backpack, you know? So that's what I did to answer your question. It should be here tomorrow. Yeah, that's good. That's going to make you so happy because you're going to have your different compartments and your zippers. That yep. be like, buy a zip here and zip it. And, you yeah, know, exactly. Um, it's got a place for your laptop, your charger. Bag. Yeah, those little things that make you just a little <laughs> happier, you know. People, uh, you need to do that. Even if, every now and then, just go out and get yourself a, 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 you know, like a six or seven pack of new underwear. You're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a great day. I got the new underwear on. I do it all the time. I love it. And and a lot of people buy all that stuff online. Like someone was telling me the other day, like, aren't you afraid to go to the mall right now because of COVID and stuff? And I'm like, I, I can't buy stuff online. Like certain things I can if I know the store and how – the size runs, but mostly I got to be there in person to check where it was made. I really think that websites mm. should be, yeah. should have to say where it's made. Like Amazon doesn't like a lot of the stuff on Amazon. They, they'll tell you like what the fabric's made of, but I also, oh. I want right there. I want them to say, where was it manufactured? Made in China, made where Mexico, Bangladesh. I think it should, yeah. it should say it. It's interesting because I think even with certain items, like I'll look at like uh, what I think are identical pairs of like pants or something, mm-hmm. and one might be made made in Bangladesh, and the next one might be say like made in Mexico or made in. So I, I I don't know how that works. I don't know if the if the the big mama company is just like getting shipments from around the world. I don't know how it works. Well, it's probably you know? like um, you know one company will have it made really good and they sell it for a lot. And then another company will go like, well, look, that sells. Let's make our version of it, but for cheap. And so they'll they'll go like, okay, well, then let's make it in China. (laughs) You know? Yeah, that's interesting. It's uh, um, the family and I, we, it was, man, we had a great, oh my gosh, last weekend. Well, this weekend, the most recent weekend, we we did a a repeat. Um, So, you know, we're at a small town and it's near Fresno and, 
do? We got to go to like indoor dining and then we went to a carnival that was outside the mall. Dude, it was so freaking fun, man. That's cool. I hadn't done it. I hadn't done this stuff in, in so long. Like yeah. as, a, as a family outing, my gosh, it man. It feels like, good, right? It feels great. My son, he, we went to this, this diner and they played like fifties music and, you know, I got a cheeseburger and a salad and some fries. And it was like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, my wife got chicken fried steak. She gave me some of it. I mean, when's the last time you had chicken fried steak? You're not making that at home. <laughs> yeah, you know. Like, right? Like, yeah. And let's get stuff we can't really make at home. But like, um, I asked my son. Oh, by the way, since then, my wife, is, she um, today she made some chicken. Well, I know you don't eat meat. Sorry about that. But oh, she yeah. made chicken for my son. And uh, when we were at the diner, um, Austin – we go, what's the chicken strips? And he goes, oh, this reminds me of nostalgia. <laughs> like, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I haven't had a milkshake since 2019. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Was great. He, he was should great write a song out. called Nostalgia and sing about chicken fingers. <laughs> that would be a great yeah, country I song. I haven't had chicken fingers or milkshakes since 2019. <laughs> yeah. Do you – Um. so you, you don't you don't eat meat anymore and you, and no. you don't buy products? Hmm. I, was it an overnight thing or did you No. Um I started doing it for like weight. <laughs> oh, wait, here, wait, here's a joke. Yeah. Was it hard to quit was it hard to quit cold turkey? No offense. <laughs> no offense. Yeah, I quit yeah. cold turkey. I quit turkey, cold yeah. turkey. <laughs> um yeah. I, I, I try to do I, I would I would try to do it for like uh losing weight and stuff because I just knew it's bad for you to eat so much meat and um I ate a lot of it. I mean, I'm Italian, man. I, I, I ate meat my entire life. And um, so I would go like, I'm going to do a month without meat. And then when the month was over, I'd be like, I'm going to reward myself and have a burger. And then I would mm. do, and then I go back another month and I go, okay, this time I'm going to do two months. And I kept doing it. And the more I did it, the more I felt a little like I didn't want meat anymore. Um, and it was during the time where like everybody's Twitter feed was – people kept retweeting those videos of like cows getting slaughtered and how poorly they treat pigs and stuff like that. And it's like um, – and then I started to learn more and more about it. And, and I feel – I personally feel that when you're consuming this, you're consuming a lot more than the meat and the stuff that we know they put in the animal, right? Steroids and, and vitamins and chemicals and stuff but besides that i think about the mental state of mind the animals are in like depression you know what i mean mm. like if you, you're literally bred for this in your whole life you're you've known nothing but like these cages or you know locked in these closed tight areas and and stuff like that and it's like and then you die and in, or in, not only do you have depression in your body but the last thing that you have is fear before they murder you it's one they don't put them down peacefully like the doctor and the horse there behind you <laughs> they don't put them down peacefully yeah. you know they slaughter these animals they hang them they shoot them so like you, you have an animal that's like it, it's filled with depression their entire life and then the last adrenaline that shoots into their body is fear and then you're consuming a depression and fear when you eat this, and I think it absolutely is now in your in your body. A lot of people might think I'm crazy, but I really do believe that. And uh, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. No one calls anyone a pig as a nice thing. <laughs> you know, people call cops yeah. that, or they call men that if they're being sleazy. You know what I mean? Oh my God, you're such a or they're or you're dirty or a slob. You're a pig. It's like, have you ever seen pigs like when they're not? bread for just food they're like so cute and happy and running around and and they're like well pig you're a pig you're dirty and you're a slob it's like the only reason why pigs are dirty and smell is because you keep them in those conditions you know like my neighbor actually has a pig in their front lawn um funny story it was actually actually it's not that funny um luke perry it was luke perry's house uh you know luke perry right from 90210 he he died recently yeah oh wow he died Oh, man. He died like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Actually, his his yeah. last movie is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Really? Oh, my god! Yeah, he's in there. I mean, yeah. So he lived oh. around the corner from me, and in his front yard, he's, he's I mean, he still has chickens and everything, but he had this, he's, he's got this big pig. I mean, I think his girlfriend or wife or whatever still lives there, and she takes care of everything still, but there's this, like, really cute pig that hangs out in his front lawn, and it's like a dog. It's like their pet, and it doesn't stink. <laughs> you know it's really sweet 
Did you like Babe? Did you ever see Babe? I used to watch that when I was a kid. Yeah, I grew up watching. Was, it. How does your father? How does your father? Um, does he eat me? Does he think? Yeah. Does he have different views on this than you? Is he like, hey, um, my son's a little uh, cuckoo, but whatever. <laughs> you do. Like, it kind of started like that it, in the beginning. Like they couldn't believe that I didn't eat meat anymore, and then my actually my sister gave me the most grief about it. Like. Oh my god! Like our whole lives growing up, we had delicious meatballs and stuff and pizzas that our grandmother would make us. And like, how could you give all that up? And I was just like, you know, but my parents didn't really give me any hard time about it. As time went on, they got more and more. Recently, my dad has been saying he wants to try to have less meat. Yeah. So um, he's actually kind of. I think I'm slowly convincing him of my reasoning. <laughs> Man, the the weight loss is great. What, what? How much did you weigh at your at your heaviest? Do you have any idea? Two fifty. Whoa, two fifty, and yeah. and and at your um, two fifty. And I'm not and tall. Then, <laughs> and how how? Uh, yeah, I know. You're giving all this personal information. I'm like, I'm like, how old are you? And how that's much okay. Did you weigh? <laughs> you know, like the most. Yeah, we're gonna dive deep into my personal stats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, so you weigh you weigh two fifty. Uh huh. And what do you think you weigh now? Do you have any idea? I know for a fact I weigh one eighty five as of today. Wow! And then when you, what was your lightest that you weighed? Um, one seventy. I got down to after the two fifty. I lost all that weight at first. It was one seventy over the course of like four months. Wow! I do remember that. I remember you were yeah. like, I remember you like, whoa, you lost weight. Like it's mm-hmm. a, you you've pretty much been able to maintain like an under two hundred like body exactly. I promised myself I would never go over 200 again. And at one point at the end of quarantine, let's call it at the end of 2020, um, I was like 290 something. And I was like, I promised myself I would never go over 200 again. I got to get back. You mean mean, you were 190, not 290. You mean 190. Excuse me. 190. Yeah. I was getting close to 200 again. And I was like, I really got to get back. I mean, I never ate meat all last year. It was just, there's a problem when you don't eat meat is like, you'll, you'll substitute with other fun stuff. And sometimes when you go to a restaurant and you don't eat meat, the only options is all fried stuff. Mm. Like in Texas, I went to Austin, Texas, which is not a great place to go if you don't eat meat. (laughs) And like, you're like, what do you have? That's not meat. And they're like French fries or, you know, (laughs) <laughs> we have this fry do you have any you have any vegetables uh, yeah it's tempura like, like oh, everything's God. fried it's so you easy mean, to gain weight yeah um what uh what was what was austin texas like i saw that you were there did, did you get the, the whole joe rogan experience vibe? Did you just <laughs> seen the comedy store guys like, yeah what, what was it, like? it was well i'll tell you since we're, i'll tell you all about it we're, we're while we're on the topic i went to a restaurant with uh with sam Tripoli. i was featuring for sam tripoli and uh we went to a restaurant, which was really cool, and it was a really nice place on the water, And but it's all barbecue. Like, everything on the menu is barbecue. And Sam was like, fuck, I forgot you don't eat meat. I'm so sorry we came here. And I'm like, dude, it's Texas. Everything's going to be this. So um, yeah. so they let me order off the kids' menu, which says, which literally says you must be 11 years old or under to order off that menu. I'm like, I don't eat meat. Will you guys make the exception, please? And they're like, okay. I'm like, okay, let me get the grilled cheese sandwich. And then the grilled cheese came around, and, like, Sam Trippy was, like, teasing me really loud at the restaurant. Like, oh, your, your grilled cheese sandwich is here, little boy. And then, like, I didn't know this. At the end, we all finished eating. It was, like, me and another guy and Tripoli. We all finished eating, and the waitress brought over a little ice cream for me. She's like, yours came with ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> but yes um my first night there thursday we didn't have any shows so we decided to hit the town and, and check out some local spots and uh we went by kill tony on their 500th episode we were hanging out backstage so yeah rogan was there kill tony red band um and then we went to the after party and like they were all hanging out over there i did talk to red band and, and Hinchcliffe for a little while and you know red band was saying he really loves moving over there um and yeah, there's so many comedy spots that are all right around the corner from each other or not far from. There's so many comedy spots now. And I went we kind of checked them all out Thursday night and everyone I walked into them I'm like I knew someone. Like what are you doing here? They oh. used to be comedy store door guys and now they're door guys at this little comedy room here. I mean in Austin. What's it called like is it called like the Vulcan Gas something or the other? I didn't go into that one I don't think. Oh. I forget the but name. But there's a little- 
Because I heard that the Cap City Comedy Club, it closed, but then it's going to reopen or something. Do you I, know about that? I heard that that's reopening. Um, the room that I did, to be honest with you, was phenomenal. If I could be honest with you, Darren, this is me saying this, not Darren, so no offense to anybody. Um, I have no idea why any comic would move to Austin, Texas right now. I got to admit, I, I contemplated the idea of it in the beginning, but you know what? It's just it's it's become overpopulated with comics, so it's the same thing of L.A. You're also uh, you know one out of a million again, and now you're wow. just in a pl- area that's not as nice. To be honest with you, there's really nice places in Austin, but a comic's not going to afford that air- neighborhood, and all the mm-hmm. comedy rooms aren't in that neighborhood. The comedy rooms are, if I can be honest, in the shithole parts of town, like. I'm like, why would I move here so I can do all the shitty shows and sometimes the good shows? Or yeah. I can fly here twice a year and only do the good shows. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's how I look at it. And it's just, it's going to become a, a new Vegas for me. Like, I'll just go back a lot and do a lot of people's shows. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I featured for Tripoli. It's called the Romo Room, which is kind of inside of a, a tap house. But the, it's it's turning – it's it's a comedy club. They have a big front room. They have a little room in the back, which is like the room two. They do open mics. I was actually able to do their midnight open mic after our shows. And um, everyone that runs it is really, really cool guys. The guy who books it is a comic, so he gets it. And um, right you know away, that guy dude. Trevor's out there, right? Tre- Trevor Kavala or something? Yes, or? he's out there too. He he hung out with us the whole weekend, and he, and he kind of drove us around a little bit too, and he did guest sets. He's a great dude, and he knows everybody. He knows all the rooms out there. And, um, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I got off stage, um, Saturday night, which is our last show. And I, and I went to go get paid and, uh, the, the guy who books it and paid me was like, dude, uh, he's he's like, he's like, can you do an hour? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I'm going to have you just headline next time. Uh, and right away gave me a a June date. So I go back and, and do the room in June, but I'm headlining. Nice. Nice. Um, it's funny. The reason I ask about Cap City Comedy Club, they uh, out of nowhere, they they um they started following me last night, like on online, like you know, social media. Yeah, I think it's on Twitter, and I was like, wow, I wonder why Cap City's following me. Because they heard they, about they, the um, neck gator, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that. He's got that Elon Musk neck gator. He's coming up. <laughs> I literally, you ever do that? You ever wonder, like, why is this? Per-? Like, I'm like, that's cool. Like, you know, like, like yeah. when Joe Rogan started following me, I was like, whoa, Joe Rogan follows me. Like, that's cool. You yeah. Know, like, oh, it's you a know, good feeling. Come up, but, but it's, yeah, <laughs> it's still, yeah, it's still cool. It's like you know, right? Totally. You know, every now and then. Oh, by the way, speaking of Sam Tripoli, for those watching and listening, Sam Tripoli's got great podcasts. Go check him out, and he's also done the Pocket Party podcast uh, a few times. So. Check out those episodes. I I'm love him, dude. To... He's so helpful and so so helpful. And you know, my wife's Armenian. My son's half Armenian. I got yeah. the Armenian connection with Sam Tripoli, and he's such he's a nice a guy. guy. He's such a good person, and just happy for comics, you know, and and tries to be helpful. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he, he, I mean, he gives me tips, dude. He's just like, you know, you're such a good comic. You're a good writer. He's like, you really deserve, you know, to headline this room and stuff. But, but then he'll give me tips on like what I'm missing on, on like podcasts and stuff. Like, like I'm always going to do this podcast. I'm always going to do homeschooled podcasts. I think it serves a great purpose. I, I, I love what it is. It's, it's like by artists for artists and we document the journey is what we do. Um, and I'm always going to do it. But I realize I'm not going to get famous from it. You know what I mean? It's not going to be the church what's happening now. It's never going to be the Joe Rogan experience. And I know that I need to come up with a new thing, a new show in addition that I'm going to find my niche audience. Sam found his tinfoil hat audience. Um, you know what I mean? I along, need to find my people. That, along with that, it um, comes a lot of trouble though too, right? Because he did get popular but then he also got kicked off of certain social media yeah type i think play. he's banned on twitter right now but to be honest with you i have it i think twitter's on its way out um i think a lot of people left twitter i don't know if you've noticed this but videos don't get the views they used to get when you put them on twitter um yeah. i think that instagram and tiktok are destroying the game primarily instagram and to be honest with you 
anything on Twitter fe- streaming, when you go, what's streaming on Twitter? It's nonstop propaganda news that's mm-hmm. like this story is less credible than something on CNN. You know what I mean? It's like it, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Uh, I, I think Twitter is like on its way out. But I mean, I still use it because I know that a lot of the people are. Yeah, whenever I open up the Twitter app, it's usually like, it's 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 like picking up a newspaper full of bad news. It'll be like exactly, like so and so is trending. I'm like, oh, why are they trending? And then they they did something wrong, Mm -hmm. or they. It's just like I I don't need that in my life. And if I post a positive video, like I took a clip from my podcast, and it's thirty seconds of positivity of how to like help someone who comes to you uh, and and uh it did uh it, it did two thousand views in 30 minutes on instagram oh, okay wow like i posted yeah. it i drove home got out of the car checked it it was at two thousand views i posted the same video video on twitter it's still not up to 17 views yet 17 views and it's wow. for like a month no one's on twitter the positivity stuff isn't getting pushed it's not getting shared or retweeted no right about that dude you're right like there, there i mean there are people that put positive stuff you know mm-hmm. like I, I think i retweeted mr t today because mr t was yeah. like you know like let's find kindness and love in our heart yeah. it's all about you know love like which is good but you're right so many well these like, guys I have one, followers already yeah. mr t yeah, joey yeah. diaz is still yeah, on twitter build, build anything it's like mm-hmm. i remember i wrote something like uh I, I did like a little trial a few years back i put like you know, I, I I said like I hope you have a great day, and then I also wrote like I hope you have a terrible day, <laughs> and or, and I think that I hope you have a terrible day got way more retweets, or it was something like that. You know? like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that exactly, but it was something like, you know, I love traffic uh-huh. or I hate traffic or it would. Uh, I, I tweeted something negative, and the negative is the one that grew on yeah. Twitter, and I'm like, okay, Twitter, Twitter is everybody's opinions on something, you know. You know, yeah. F Antifa or defund police, and then it's it's just it's 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 the continuation of of dividing us as human beings, and yeah. so it's either a post about that, and then it's constant arguing on that thread. It's a back and yeah. forth arguing, and it's like I know, I, yeah, and I just I, I you know I couldn't even. Um, a lot of the people left Twitter because they. I mean, I'm not trying to say I'm for any type of side, but it's just a fact that the majority of the country were, were, are giant Trump supporters. And when they banned him for basically absolutely no reason and no logic or logistic behind it, a lot of the people were like, we're boycotting Twitter and they left. It's just true. You know, which goes yeah, to not- show you that it really was a faked election because <laughs> that many people left Twitter because they were mad about it. Man, that's something I'm not into, man. News yeah. or politics. Really. I mean, something yeah. that will, will enter my world. Cause I'm like, I don't know. I figured that stuff's out of my control. Let me just concentrate on what I can control. And, you know, I've been doing my daily workouts, the, um, yeah. the 50 push 50 sit ups. I love doing that. Like, it's I'll skip a day. Positive there, stuff, man. It's like positive. And I know that just like you, you know, we'll put the stuff out there. It's like, I think, you know, I'd rather put some, some, something positive in the world. You know, mm-hmm. that's why I followed the, the different boxing coaches and, you know, and, and, They'll write little stuff, and I'm like, oh, let me reshare that with people. And exactly. and it's funny, I get DMs all the time, or I'll get people commenting. They're like, hey, Darren, I like what you're bringing into my world because mm. we got to combat that negativity, man. They, it's just out there. And, That's the stuff you know, that needs to get shared more often and pushed more often. And um, you know, that's why the name of my tour this year is because uh, I, I I do have a lot of gigs coming up, so I'm just calling my 2021 tour. It's called the Only Love Can Save the World Tour. Oh, um, I love that. That's I, great. I had t-shirts made and everything, dude. It's really cool. Um, you can go to my website, homeschoolpod.com or augustinocomedian.com and click on merch and you can buy it. It's, uh, it's, I had someone draw it up. It's, it's literally my hands doing like the heart and it's over the mm-hmm. planet, over the world. Um, and it says only love can save the world. I'm going to sell them at the shows and stuff, but that's the name of uh, my tour, dude. Only, the Only Love Can Save the World Tour. And, uh, you know, I, I feel strongly about that. It's not going to be people arguing about things that they like, but you don't, and you don't agree with. That's what I love about stand up comedy, man. Just exactly making people laugh, making them feel good. I was listening to this classic radio channel on Sirius XM. They're playing classic comics. And I'm like, wow, this stuff was really funny. Jackie Mason, Henny Youngman, you know, and, and just so many one liners. So funny. And I thought, 
if these jokes were written nowadays in public, like on yeah. a public forum, people would be trying to cancel those guys because something has to be a punchline in comedy. But but comedy, when it's a live room full of people, they love yeah. to laugh and clap and just we, it's like yeah. almost like a religious experience of like saying, "Oh, I do that too," you know, that kind of thing. I've said this all last year that comedy was pushed the hardest to not reopen. I mean, we had movie theaters were allowed to reopen before. I mean, restaurants were allowed to reopen, but you couldn't have someone entertaining people while they ate at the restaurant. It didn't make sense. So comedy was constantly pushed down. And I think number one is because that's the most freedom speech and freedom thinkers out there. And stand-up comics, yeah, they said, they you know. said that when people laugh, like maybe like, you know, like you could like the – you know, germs could spread through laughter. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, did. okay. You know what they do? <laughs> I thought of an idea. You know what they should do? Almost like the canary in the coal mine type of thing. They should first, you know, we everyone hang back and we send out the unfunny comedians first, just to kind of. <laughs> this guy only gets three laughs every hour. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, you're tr- <laughs> you're trying to like weed out <laughs> the yeah. like Mother Nature. Go take out the bad Next comics. Level. We're like, I'm oh man! One percent. No, we're, we're like, yeah, yeah. And then we'll, the, the, the really COVID funny. just kills all the bad comics. I think that yeah. I, I think I'll make I'll make it in the top five percent, and then I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, Darren, I get I get a, I get a laugh every minute. So, yeah, uh, I'm just able to go out there. And You're laugh. in the top one percent. You're gonna live a while. <laughs> all right, all right. No, but you know yeah. when you go out to here, here's what they didn't want you to realize. When you go out, to, when you went out to a comedy club, you sat in a, in in a you know wherever outdoors indoors. You sit with a bunch of people you don't know. You know you might be there with your wife or you know your family or something yeah. or your friend, but you look at the table next to you, in front of you, behind you, to the right of you, and there's people you don't know, and we're all laughing at the same things. You can be a black family. Yeah. I'm white. There's a Latino family, an Asian family, a Democrat family, a Republican family, a a gay couple, and we're all laughing at the same things. And from time to time, you'll look up and accidentally make eye contact with a stranger. You ever hear something funny and you look at the stranger like, did you hear that? And you make eye contact like, this guy's crazy. And nothing showed us more how alike we really all are and brought us together than going to a live stand-up comedy show. And they, they, and that was the opposite of what they wanted to happen, you know, with what Absolutely. was going on in the times. By the way, I got to say this: this phone may cut off at any minute. So Let's it end it. Let's end it because, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this to go on. He's gone, but yeah, because I have no way of charging the phone now unless I have wireless charge. I don't even. No so, worries. You want no idea. Let's end it because we. I think we went over what we wanted to do, and I wanted to get a workout in before I had to go eat with the yeah. wife. I want to um, say thank you guys thank for, you, for checking out the episode. Thank you, Augustino. And and uh, do me a favor. Go to Darren Carter on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. Watch my videos. Give it a little thumbs up. Leave a little comment. And uh, that's about it, man. Thank you so much. Instagram, official Darren Carter and Pocket Party Podcast. Thank you, Augustino. Thank you, Darren. I'm going to go ahead and do my outros now. So if your phone cuts off, that's okay. But uh, okay. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I want to give a big thank you to Darren Carter for having me be a part of the Pocket Party Podcast and for him being on the Homeschooled Podcast. And uh, I want to give a big thank you to all of you for tuning in and continuing to support Homeschooled Podcast, Pocket Party Co- Podcast, and live performers. We really appreciate it. Uh, do me a favor. A great way to support the show is by picking up a t-shirt. Not only does it support us financially, but it also also makes us feel really good when you tag us on Instagram or something like, hey, I bought your shirt. Just makes us uh, feel like people like us and, and uh, keeps us motivated to keep going and keep recording great content. So please head over to homeschooledpod.com. Click on merch. Check out the Only Love Can Save the World shirt. It's awesome. Um, we, we also have our other ones on there, the Document, the Journey, the Ex-Presidents. And uh, don't forget that I will be – I got some tour dates coming up, you guys. At the end of the month, I'm in Las Vegas for one night only. Uh, I The only info i can give you on that is you got to go to homeschoolpod.com click on tour all right we got some secret stuff going on in vegas for one night only um let's see let's see what else uh i'm gonna be in dubai as i said may 13th through the 21st if uh our dubai friends are over there or if you'll be visiting dubai at the time on your holiday i would love it if you came by and caught one of my sets information is all at homeschoolpod.com click on merch and then here's my june dates june i will be in salt lake city utah 
uh, June 5th. I will be in uh, Austin, Texas, headlining the Romo Room. I'm taking Lee Syatt to feature with me. So it's going to be awesome. We're making these t-shirts to, to sell after the show that says, A Jew and a Catholic walk into a bar. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, I'm going to – and that's – sorry, that's August tw- – uh, What's that? What would you say? Kick that mule, Lee. Kick, Kick that, that mule, Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a T-shirt, or, or maybe we'll do posters or something of like me and Lee on it, like a cartoon. Uh, and um, that's that's August 11th through 12th at, at the Romo Room, and then June 19th I'll be in Passover Robles. It's Father's Day weekend. Two shows, one night, very limited seating. That's gonna sell out. You guys can get all the tickets at homeschooledpod.com. Click on merch. And that's all. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Augustino Zoida. This is Homeschool Podcast. And don't forget that only love can save the world. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. Peace. Homeschool Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to do that at all. <laughs> <laughs>